Candy's nuts. <laughs> Candace Owens, our internet's favorite conservative lady, definitely very pretty. Internet's favorite political commentator, on par with Bet Bet Cooper. Is that her name? Brett Cooper. She's there. She was fired from the Daily Wire, but now she's back with her independent platform. She's an independent agent now, and she's doing good. Good for her. But today, we're talking about something important. Now, this is very common with uh, her. I know where to put this. This is very common with her. That she will talk about stuff which doesn't make sense. Um, but today, she was talking about Jordan Peterson and her daughter. Let's see what she said. As Nick Fuentes has a very long background of focusing his attention on Israel and Zionism, and that's what he is reacting to. Also, because Nick Fuentes has called out Jordan Peterson explicitly for a very long time as somebody who he believes has more of an allegiance to Israel than he does to Western civilization in general, essentially, that he would put Israel before he would put Canada and before he would put um, America. First, <laughs> first, um, she's talking about Nick Fuentes, who is, who's been banned from platforms all over the internet because of his racist remark and his extremist remarks for all people, for people of all color, he has said stuff. So this guy, you're taking him as a credible source for criticism. Well, fine, let's see if his criticism is uh, actually worth it or not. So, his criticism is that Jordan Peterson has allegiance to Israel. Now, Jordan Peterson, the guy who was fighting for Bill C-16, the guy who was against Bill C-16, the guy who was, who is constantly, always criticizing Trudeau's government, Trudeau? Tridow, Tridow's, I don't know how to say his name, his government, who is always, um, during the entire truckers protest, he was in the front row, he was, always supported them. He's still fighting against, against the unfair practices, new laws which are being established in Canada. This guy's allegiance towards Israel, alright, alright, let's say. Maybe, maybe he's more biased toward Israel in the entire Israel versus Hamas or Palestine versus Israel conflict. Maybe that could be a case which I don't want to get into because I don't, I, I don't know much about that. We'll see. Brand. But we should also be honest here that while people are pretending this is about Jordan Peterson versus the Grapers or pretending that every person that we're seeing right now that is having a battle right now, it's due to the Grapers, that that is not what we are watching, right? Like I said, this began long before it arrived between a beef between Michaela and Jordan Peterson and her father. It really began with people feeling like they don't trust the voices that are in the media. And Jordan Peterson is one of these voices. And that distrust in Jordan Peterson actually began when he wasn't radically honest about his addiction. And then it began further when they saw him basically not behaving in the way that he instructs others to behave. You know, there is a, a famed expression, those that can't do, teach. And people are wondering if Jordan Peterson is one of these individuals. He cannot do, he does not live his life in order, but he teaches order. Virtually everything that we've seen happen has seemed quite chaotic in his life. His correspondence with his daughter, watching this on Twitter, genuinely was just chaotic. I thought, this is chaos. What is this? It felt like chaos. Didn't All right, let me tell you what else felt like chaos. Your entire career was chaotic but you seem to be in order right now everything around you seem to be in order you have a new really beautiful channel everything the production looks great so this looks orderly but stuff that you're saying is completely chaotic do you understand what that means there is no chaos without order and there's no order without chaos they are like yin and yang that is also what Jordan Peterson has taught us so there are always going to be things that we cannot control in our life, but there are things that we can control, the responsibility that we can take. And the responsibility that we take, that thing we can make orderly. But all the other things that we are not going to take responsibility for will be chaotic. And that was the whole point of uh, Jordan Peterson. And you're saying he wasn't honest about his addiction. He, he doesn't have to be honest about his addiction. He has also said it multiple times. He doesn't want to talk about his medication. 
That's a very personal thing. If I'm on something, if I'm on steroids, I don't want to tell you about this. Unless, you know, I want to make money out of that. But some things are private to you. You don't have to be honest about things that are personal to you. If I have a disease that I don't want to talk about, I don't have to tell you about it. If I have prescription that I don't want to talk about, I don't have to tell you about it. As long as I'm not advocating against that. If I'm advocating against something and I'm doing the opposite, then that's the problem. Jordan Peterson has never advocated against prescription, especially from psychiatrists, right? He said it does help. He's so I will set this up for you. Again, Michaela Peterson is his daughter and she communicates a lot of what is happening with JP. So people see her as auxiliary to him. Now, to be fair, she is not Jordan Peterson. Of course, she is not Jordan Peterson. And we can't say that every word that she says should somehow reflect on what her father's viewpoints are. But she did tweet this. She wrote, Yes, I think the Nazis on X equating Jews with rats and using hashtags like filth should have more content moderation and censorship. <gasps> OK, what? You're just straight up calling for censorship. I mean, saying using the hashtag filth, that is literally an English word. And you can say that word whenever you want. In fact, rather notoriously, I use the word filth to describe Rabbi Shmuley. Shmuley is filth. I meant what I said. So for Michaela to make such a strong statement calling for censorship is not going to reflect well on her father. Called me a rat last week. Thank you for exposing yourself and revealing who you really work for. Wrote, you, at Nick Fuentes, really are a psychopathic rat. She is calling for the censorship of her father, right? I mean, if, if you're saying the standard is just calling somebody a rat. Michaela Peterson and Jordan Peterson, as you already said, she already said they're two different people. She already claimed they're two different people. They might have different ideologies, right? And then she doubles down on your statement and say, well, he is contradicting her, but also saying that red, saying red is okay. He, he, he didn't agree or disagree with her. He didn't say, I agree with your censorship. And he also didn't say that he agrees with calling people red is okay. He didn't say that. Maybe according to him, it's not okay to call people rat, but I'll still call you rat. Because I'm so emotionally driven because all the actions that you have done, I detest them so much that I'm aggrieved for calling you something that I don't believe is right. That you are that proper filth that we're not supposed to call people. That we're not supposed to say these things to people unless they are that. Rabbi Shmuley because Rabbi Shmuley is filth. I just said, you're filth because you are filth and that is my right to use that term. Now, Jordan Peele's the same guy who called a ch chubby woman not beautiful. He's that kind of a person. That was weird. I don't know why he did that. That was <laughs> like beauty is, I don't know. We can talk about that's a different subject. But this particular instant, that's the kind of guy he is. Does he have problem? Has, has these uh, um, rants, his rants been a lot more obvious? His rants have been a lot more noticeable after his, after his withdrawal and after his entire, the health problem he had. Yes, I think it's quite noticeable. He has been not as much orderly or he's not been as much in control of his emotions. And it's fine. You don't have to be in control of your emotions. You can let them flow. It's okay to rant. It's going to happen to all of us when we grow old. And especially what Jordan Peterson has been through, I understand. Is it going to be logical all the time? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be logical always 100%. But stuff that he has taught in 12th Rule to Life, that still remains. It doesn't matter if he goes onto a path. Let's say he goes towards a dark path. And he started detesting. He started talking completely against from everything he has taught. That's not going to change what we have learned from his books, from his teachings, from his lectures that I've watched for hours when I was younger. That's not going to take away all the truth that he has already bestowed upon us. All the truth with all the psychological research that he has over and over and over stated and given us gems. Emergency drug treatment in Russia. 
according to his family, and this was in a CBC News article from February of 2020, Jordan Peterson's family says he has sought emergency drug detox treatment in Russia after several failed attempts to overcome his dependence on a potent anti-anxiety medicine. They obviously spoke to his daughter, Michaela, as she speaks out on behalf of her father a lot. She also has her own podcast and talks a lot about growing up with him and what she's learned. And this is a direct quote from her. He's had to spend four weeks in the ICU in terrible shape, but with the help of some extremely competent and courageous doctors, he did two benzos. From that article, it reads that he was struggling with an addiction to benzos prescribed to him after a violent reaction to a strict meat and greens diet. Okay. And then in regards to his cider, the apple cider uh, overdose or the apple cider reaction, the New York Post writer put this. Quote, Peterson has previously claimed that he didn't sleep for 25 days during this time. But the longest period of human sleep deprivation ever recorded is only 11 days, the paper notes. So what they're saying is he lied. He, he must have lied. I mean, that's a unless or he just broke this record from 11 days. He, he not only doubled it, he added some. He just added uh, 14 days to the longest record ever held of sleep deprivation or... As I said, Jordan Peterson was not being honest, which would mean that he violated one of his 12 rules. Anna, you know what? We need to check this. Candace, you need to be better than the media companies you criticize. You criticize them for using articles that have no credibility and using that as fact. Randy Gardner didn't sleep for 11 days during the sleep deprivation experiment in 1963. 1963. And his record has already been broken, was broken the same year. And in 1986, Robert McDonald, who deprived himself of sleep for almost 19 days. And in 1996, GWR stopped tracking sleep deprivation, citing the harmful effect of sleeplessness. So, we you don't have any evidence that supports that you cannot actually sleep for more than 11 days but it's just that the only experiment which were allowed and which was actually done um he slept for 11 days even though his record has been broken whatever the same gardener who did the 11 days sleep deprivation experiment he in 2017 in an interview he's to npr he said that it, about 10 years ago he stopped sleeping I could not sleep. I would lay in bed for five, six hours, sleep maybe 15 minutes and wake up again. I was, I was a basket case. That's what he said. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? The, is he lying? How can you not sleep for 10 years, huh? That is against the rules. Brother, it's the same person. And at an older age, he stopped sleeping 10 years ago. What he means by that, stop sleeping, is stop sleeping conventionally the normal sleep that usually people take six seven eight hours right and they and i think that's what jordan peterson said it doesn't mean he wasn't in bed laying down with eyes closed he was but he was not in that state of unconsciousness he was not in that state of relaxation it's quite clear when he says he didn't sleep for 30 days it means he didn't have a proper sleep for 30 now this is my assumption i'm assuming he didn't properly sleep for 30 days it does, I think he was still trying to sleep. He was still trying to relax with his eyes closed. He was trying to get sleep. Maybe he was getting some dreams. He was getting, maybe, maybe he was getting lucid dreams. And maybe he doesn't want to get into this. Maybe that was hell for him. And he doesn't want to think about that. Maybe that's why he doesn't exactly know how many hours he slept. Which one time he already has broken down while talking about this to his daughter. Maybe he doesn't want to get there. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this. Maybe we should let it be because this is clearly very traumatic for him that you know evidently you are already claiming that it affected him so much that he has completely changed. Knowing that something was so traumatic, why do you want to why do you want to push him back and rethink of that event over and over again? Maybe we should let it be because it's his private thing. And you're questioning his honesty. He has been honest about his work. He has been honest about his teaching. He has been honest about everything that he has taught. Because everything he has taught has been always backed by evidence, has been enough and thoroughly researched upon. And that is the thing that he taught in his lectures and in his books.
And that's what truly matters. Love is about the honesty about what you teach to be true. Our own experience is our own. That is about privacy. Now he has this privacy, he doesn't want to be honest about his addiction. He doesn't have to. That's his personal problem. That's none of my business. Everything that's happening with him and his uh, wife personally in their private space, medication, health, I just wish them luck. I hope they're doing good. That has nothing to do with his honesty about things that he teaches. Honesty about what he actually preaches. Honesty about his actual work. If you go to his website, if you look at his courses, I mean, he doesn't have a course, whatever it is. I think they're honest. I don't know for exactly. And if they're 100% honest or not, I don't know. Well,